episode 184 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 30th of September so welcome everybody. I hope you all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some crochet, I have some sewing to show you, I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group and some information on my shop. So we have the Craft 20 a Day make along going on in Ravelry and Instagram and I'm going to be drawing for prizes at the end of September so actually I'm going to draw that for next week because obviously you've got the rest of the day still to sort of enter and then I'll draw more prizes at the end of the year, that's when the make along finishes. The make alongs basically just working a little bit out of the larger projects that you've been working on a little bit every day. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? I have a finished object and I've cheated a bit. <laughs> Adam's mum knitted this. This is a gorgeous little baby hat. It isn't quite dry at the moment so I've left it on the balloon where I've washed it to block it over to make that like, makes a nice smooth blocked finish and it's one of the heirloom hats for newborns by Pearl Soho and it's a free pattern and it's got the cutest little loop on the top and I love these decrease lines around the top of the hat as well. So this is knitted in a leading men fiber arts yarn which is called the greatest day of the year and Liz has also knitted a little cardigan to go with this previously so we'll have a cardigan and little hat to match. This cardigan is the newborn vertebra cardigan and it's a pattern by Kelly Van Nakirk and I will leave links to these patterns in the description bar down below but both these patterns this vertebrae and the hat are actually free so it's, it's a lovely little set um, for the new baby and I still have some yarn left over for some little socks I think so that'll be nice to have some socks that match as well. So the newborn vertebrate just took over 50 grams and the hat took about 20 grams so there's a little bit left over just enough for a pair of socks I think. But I also wanted to include this week's gadget in my knitting section because I find it really useful to have a pack of balloons that you can just blow up to whatever size a hat you're making to give it a nice block. So you can pop this in like a vase or a pint glass so the top surface isn't touching on any other surface so it can dry nice and easily. I didn't blow it up too much, just enough, get those stitches all nice and straight rather than it being sort of folded on a flat surface but I just think that's really cute. So the heirloom hats for newborns also has a stripey version and one with a pom-pom on as well but I just thought that this little i-cord loop was the cutest thing ever. <laughs> so it does look quite a big hat um, for a baby but I'm probably likely to have a baby with quite a big head because I've got quite a big head so <laughs> and I'm sure it'll come in if, if it's a bit big uh, for the baby to start with but it is knitted on 2.75 millimeter needles and it is Liz's gauge so Liz is slightly looser than me so if I knitted it it would probably come up a bit tighter so the pattern actually gets you to use the 12 inch circular needles so that you can just keep knitting round without using magic loop and then it says to go on to DPNs for this top bit up here so it's a nice easy knit so the next part of the knitting section, I have actually pre-recorded a little clip of Adam wearing his socks that I showed you last week on the podcast. So if you want some information on these socks and how they were knitted and the yarn that was used, if you just pop back to last week's episode, you'll be able to get that. But I'll put the video in here of Adam wearing his new socks. Are you feeling nice and cosy? Yes, lovely and warm. Show us your legs then. Look at those. Nice and long socks. It does look quite Halloween, I think, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> so, the next thing I have to show you isn't actually a proper garment. It's my swatch for my wishes cardigan. <laughs> so I popped it on my blocking mat here and I, I thought I'll just show it to you and uh, how I sort of knit a gauge swatch and how I block it. So this is the yarn that I dyed specifically for the Wishes cardigan by Hohi Locatelli and it's a gorgeous sort of waterfall front cardigan 
I'm going to knit in this yarn and it's a I think I said that it was llama last week but it is a yak merino and silk blend which is lovely and drapey and I first when I first knitted the swatch I did give it a quick measure to see what sort of gauge I was getting before I blocked it and I was getting three and a quarter inches width per 20 stitches and it actually requires four inches per 20 stitches so I have managed to block it out to that width but it isn't again it's not quite dry so I haven't took it off the blocking mat yet um, once it's dry I'll leave it rest for a day or so and then measure the gauge again and see if I'm getting gauge for this. I've heard that a couple of people have had issues getting the exact gauge for the Wishes cardigan so I'll see how I get on. What I'll probably do is if even if I don't get gauge I'll just sort of calculate what size I need to knit to get the measurement to fit me so I can make my calculations for that. But I think that the yarn is, is knitting up really nicely. When I knitted my little square I did some garter stitch either side of the 20 stitches in the centre so that it can lie flatter and I did the same on the cast off edge. I normally do it on the beginning of the swatch as well. Um, Oh, the cast off edges down there. <laughs> I normally do it on the beginning of the swatch as well, but I just completely forgot and just started doing the stocking stitch already. So I've blocked it using some, these are the mats that are supposed to be used to put on the garage floor, I think, but they come up cheaper than the Knit Pro ones and I quite like them being sort of all in grey. And these blockers are the Knit Pro blocking pins that come in a row because they're much easier to place than just using normal blocking pins and I've got these in my shop and I'll leave a link to those in the description bar down below but I am now excited for this to dry and to get on with my wishes card again because it's going to be lovely I think. The things that I've got left on my make nine include this cardigan, the Stephen West mystery make along and also an acorn which I want to do a few of those so that I can put it on my garland that I'm creating that I started last year which started with the autumn leaves but if I add some pumpkins and some acorns to it I thought it'd look really lovely so watch out for that soon. So I, again I haven't got loads of knitting to show you this week because I have been working on some patterns for the advent so they're pretty much written and everything I'm just doing samples so obviously it takes me time to knit samples for those. So that's all the knitting I've got to show you this week but I do have some crochet to show you. So I've been working on my Battenberg blanket and this is a gorgeous gorgeous pattern by Sandra Paul. So I have made a cushion cover um, with the, the same pattern previously but I just thought it'd be really nice to make one up to use for the baby and I've chosen sort of muted colours but also some pops of colour because I thought it'd be nice for for the baby to have as a blanket what I might do is just make a small version and then I can add to it when the baby gets a bit older I thought that'd be nice I just love these little squares. So Sandra's got a brilliant tutorial on her website about how you make each of the squares and how you join them together. And I really love the way that the blanket looks on the back with the little joins. Um, so I've been using little bits of leftover yarn to do the coloured squares and then I've used an undyed merino and nylon to do the ones in between and I just I sell the undyed yarn in my shop as well and I'll leave a link to that in the description bar down below. So I am working in the shape of a square and each sort of time I show this to you I'll do a strip of colour and undyed round each of the two sides that are open and I've sort of finished off these edges at uh, the two sides at the top. I'm not quite sure how big I'm going to do it but it's getting, it's getting a reasonable size already which I'm pleased about. I'm finding that doing a routine of making so many coloured squares to fit in with the ones I've already done to make like an L shape each time and then in the same session doing the undyed ones in between just for those two rows I think it's breaking it up enough to keep me really interested in wanting to make another square so there we go I will leave links to Sandra's tutorials for this blanket in the description bar down below but it is a free pattern as well which is brilliant so I also have a couple well three little squares ready for the next row to start I've got a nice turquoise there 
I'm loving this sort of turquoise colour at the moment. I'm trying to disperse it sort of relatively evenly over the blanket that there are a few different turquoises that I've been using. But there we go. So the next section is my sewing section and I've been working on some clothes as well. So Barbara, would you like to pop over and show us what you've got on? Thank you very much, Barbara. So Barbara is wearing yet another Frankie t-shirt. <laughs> but I have made quite a few modifications on this one. So this is based on the Frankie t-shirt from Tilly and the Button stretch book. And I will leave a link to that in the description bar down below. So the idea was for me to make a button down pyjama top for the hospital so that I can unbutton my top in order to breastfeed and do skin to skin when the baby's born and I looked online and there was loads of pyjamas that were made of like a woven cotton and I just thought it'd be really nice to actually have some made out of jersey because it's cosier <laughs> so I thought well, I will have a go hacking the Frankie t-shirt to see if I can make a button down version so first of all I have got the piece of pattern piece that I have modified and you can probably just about see the inside line here is my original front panel for the Frankie and I've added a couple of inches to the side seams because obviously being pregnant I'm going to be even bigger still when I come to go to the hospital to give birth so I thought I'll give myself a bit more room there and it is relatively baggy t-shirt anyway so it's not too bad and I also increased the length of the front just a little bit and I just I just sort of guessed how much I was going to add just to balance the front seam up because the Frankie t-shirt is is like a like a baseball t-shirt anyway so it doesn't matter so much if the front comes up a little bit with the bump <laughs> so I added I think it was probably about an inch an inch and a half to the bottom and then in order to do the button placket what I did is I thought right how big is my button placket going to be I thought three quarters of an inch so I did that times two plus a quarter of an inch seam allowance to turn under so that will then turn to the inside on this fold line then you've got your seam allowance to tuck in on the inside as well what I did was cut a little bit of jersey interfacing and ironed it in this position here so I'd got an inch away from the edge of the panel and I'd cut two of those obviously for one each side and then you can see the button placket here is a usable button placket which I'm actually really pleased about. I thought, well, I'll have a go and see how it turns out with some fabric that I'm not too bothered about and see how it comes out. And actually it's come out really nicely. I won't parade this round the, the lounge because it's very similar to my, my other Frankie t-shirts. It's just, I've got the button placket. And the other change I made is obviously because you've got an opening here, the neck band, I've actually made it so that it comes in and finishes off um, flush to the edge of the front panel just at the front here. I've graded it in slowly I think normally it, it grades in quite quickly just at the end of the neck band but I just think that's a, it's a nice little feature. So this fabric is some just cotton jersey that hasn't got any elastine in it that I had in my stash. Um, I think it was given to me actually this piece but it hasn't got any proper um, elastine in it so it hasn't got a load of stretch but it is, it, it's got mechanical stretch rather than the, the elastine in it. And if you actually look really closely, I'll lean it towards the camera. <laughs> this side, the pink flowers are facing up and this side, the blue flowers are facing up um, because I couldn't get the two front panels out of the fabric otherwise, but do you know, no one's gonna notice. <laughs> but now I've told you, you're all gonna notice, aren't you? Um, and then obviously the back panel is one piece as well. I didn't make any adjustments to the back panel. I just kept it how it is. It's because it's the front bit that's going to be sticking out more. <laughs> so I think that that'll be a handy thing to have at the hospital so that I can unbutton it for breastfeeding. Um, I might make another set where I can make some bottoms to match, but we shall see how time goes. But at least I've got one version that has a button down top that I can wear. So thank you very much, Barbara. 
we've got more baby themed things now for sewing i'm afraid um but you might find it interesting in case you need to make one yourself so the moses basket that i bought didn't have a mattress protector on it and rather than buying a new mattress um to get the mattress protector that fits because they didn't seem to do one exactly the same i thought well i'll make a mattress protector this is made out of a material called PUL or polyurethane laminate. So it's basically a, a cotton fabric coated with TPU, which makes a breathable but waterproof surface, which is brilliant. And that's exactly what you need for mattress covers. They sell this material at numerous places. I've just had a quick Google before and I saw that Cuddle Plush Fabrics and Plush Addict both had um, this fabric for sale and I'm sure there's loads of other places as well. I can't remember where I got this fabric from because I did initially buy it to make sanitary towels with um, but I got quite a big piece so I thought well I'll, I'll use it to make a mattress protector. I have used the shiny side up so that I can wipe down the mattress protector if it does get um, wet on it. I think that will be handier. And obviously I've got to make some sheets to go on this as well, but that shouldn't be too hard, especially now because I've made the pattern for it. So what I did is I took the mattress and I put it flat on a piece of um, pattern paper. So the pattern paper that I have is from a shop called More Plan Online and I, buy, I bought a massive roll so it's going to last me forever, but they do do smaller ones. So I traced around my mattress and then I added a centimetre and a half seam allowance all the way around. And then I measured the halfway point by folding the pattern piece in half, which is there. And then I measured two inches um, so that we'd have an overlap because we're going to cut two of these to do the back so that you've got like a pillowcase overlap. I did initially think well I'll add an extra seam allowance but I was really short on fabric so I ended up just cutting pieces that were two inches past the halfway point. So I had two pieces for the back of the mattress and you can see how it's overlapped here. So I've literally just turned over a quarter of an inch twice and top stitched that down to give a nice finish and then these pieces overlap once you sew them together and then I've just put the pieces together done a centimetre and a half seam allowance and sewn all the way round and that's enclosed it already. I didn't bother doing a overlock seam because the fabric doesn't fray anyway. So that is the mattress cover done. <laughs> so I did actually do a purple one as well just as a spare because I had some purple in my stash as well so I've got two of those although I'll have to make some sheets that are slightly darker colour so that the purple doesn't show through. Um, but there we go. I wanted to use what I'd got rather than buying in more fabrics because I've got quite a lot of stash already. So I'll leave a link to the shops that I have found that sell PUL in the description bar down below. So I'm on to the Ask Me Anything section now and I've got a couple of questions from the Ravelry group. If you don't use Ravelry you can just email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com and I'll answer your question on the podcast. So first of all, Angela was asking, how do I care for project bags or what do I recommend for the care of a project bag that I sell in my shop? So the ones that haven't got free motion embroidery in, on the front, you can stick them in the washing machine at 30 degrees. But I would hand wash the ones that have been free motion quilted just because in the washing machine it knocks it about quite a lot. But ones that haven't got the free motion quilting, I suggest you can put them in the washing machine at 30 degrees on a cool wash. So the second question is from George and she was asking whether I'd knitted the Penguono by Stephen West because I do like my Stephen West patterns because it's a really good stash buster as well she was saying but I haven't knitted it George I haven't knit one yet um I have sort of thought about it but I haven't got round to it just yet I do worry that it might turn out a bit little bit sort of oversized and frumpy and make me just feel like a big mess <laughs> I do like things to be relatively fitted so that I feel sort of put together <laughs> but I may knit it in the future there's a couple of other patterns that I quite fancy for making a garment for sort of being cozy in the house with so maybe I'll get round to it one of these days 
So we're on the last section and this is just about my shop. So I wanted to reiterate to everybody that my shop is not actually going to close at all while I'm having the baby. I have Adam to help me pack and post orders from the website so that'll be absolutely fine. It might take me an extra couple of days while I'm actually giving birth if we're in the hospital and things um, but I'm going to leave the shop open. So at the moment I've taken down a lot of my hand dyed yarns and handmade project bags but everything that I've got ready to ship is still on there including loads of gadgets, knitting needles and crochet hooks and things like that. Next week I'll be having some more gadgets in so watch out for that. Um, but the yarn and the project bags will be back again in January and I'm planning on doing another set of yarn clubs for next year January to September and um, also planning out advents as well for next year so it just means that I'm not selling colorways die to order until January so with in terms of the podcasts I am going to try and record once a week to tell you what I've been up to up to the birth and I'm going to try and pre-record a couple of videos like my make nine summaries uh, for this year so that you have something to watch for a couple of weeks while I have a couple of weeks off um, when the baby's born I am planning on doing vlogmas but I'm going to have to do it a weekly video I think rather than a video every day because it is an awful lot of work doing vlogmas um, a video every day I think it probably took me um, last year and the year before when I did it it probably takes um, two two and a half hours a day to sort of sort out the footage edit and upload and everything so it is quite time consuming so I will be doing one a week but, but I think it'll be nice to have a little bit of footage of the baby's first Christmas it won't be completely all baby stuff but anything that's sort of Christmas related and things that I'll dress the baby up in um, that, that have been handmade might be interesting for you guys so I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!